Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. PNL Patreon family 50th birthday shout out to that lady on your screen. Her name is Grace. Grace is from the parish of St. Elizabeth, but she once lived at Belmont in the parish of Westmoreland. Grace is now living in Florida in the United States of America. <laughs> Grace, I have known you for how long? <laughs> Over 30 years? And I must say, you are aging like fine wine. Let's hope that today you are going to be having a wonderful birthday. And may you live to see a whole lot more. So later on today, we are going to be continuing with the live stream that we started on Saturday. That live stream was cut short due to circumstances beyond my control. So at 5.30 this afternoon, I'm going to be unraveling this call center worker's HIV saga. Don't miss it. Now, in the news today, first up, we are learning that early this morning, Monday, September 11, several taxi drivers who ply the routes Savannah Lamar to Grangel and Savannah Lamar to Burn Savannah, they withdrew their services. They also used anything they could find to block the road, making it impossible. The taxi drivers, they are protesting against the bad road condition. Several schools were affected by this action. Also, many persons who were going to work or other places, they had to turn back. The drivers, they are vowing to continue with the protest until they hear some good words as to when the road will be fixed. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you. In this next story, we are learning that fire of unknown origin completely destroyed a two apartment bar and shop at Roan River in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that on Saturday, the female owners and operators of the bar and shop, they locked it up and left. We are told that sometime after that, it was seen on fire. The fire department, they were contacted and on their arrival, they were only able to do cooling down operation because the shop that is made out of board and all its contents were completely destroyed. Both the fire department and the police, they are carrying out investigation to ascertain what could have caused this fire. Sad indeed. Now, on Saturday, I told you about the fatal accident involving that young man on your screen. His name is Christopher Williams. Christopher, he celebrated his 18th birthday last month on August 26. I had said that Chris, he was the one who was driving the bike. However, there were persons who commented that Chris, he was not the one driving it. I have checked with the investigators and that's the same information they have. So I have no option but to stick with the official report. If you have any evidence that Chris was not the one driving the bike, please go to the Negril police station and talk to the investigators. The information is that a man, he was driving that Honda CRV on your screen. He was traveling from Negril towards Sheffield direction. It is said that Chris, he was driving that green Cabra CG150 motorcycle. He was traveling in the opposite direction from Sheffield towards Negril direction. Apillion was on the bike. It is said that neither Chris nor the Pillion were wearing a helmet. And it is said that Chris, he overtook a line of traffic. He failed to go back to the left side of the road in time and he collided into the Honda CRV that was coming in the opposite direction. Both Chris and the Pillion, they were thrown from the bike onto the roadway.
Chris, he received serious head and bodily injuries and he died on the spot. The Pelean, he received minor injuries and he was rushed to hospital where he was treated. Sad indeed. And talking about sad indeed, boy may I tell you, this one. It took place yesterday afternoon. Sunday, September 10, about 2 o'clock. It took place right in front of the Royal Tan Hotel sign at Cooper's Pen in the parish of Trelawney. We are learning that a man. He's from Kingston. He was driving a blue Toyota Yaris motor car. He was heading towards Montego Bay direction. In the car with him was family members to include his three weeks old daughter, Daniela Morgan. She was born on August 26. Now, do you realize that young Daniela and the guy Chris, who I just featured in the first story, they shared the same birthday, August 26. So, the family members, they were traveling towards Montego Bay and the road surface, we are told, was wet. On reaching in front of the sign to the Royalton Hotel, the Toyota Yaris motor car, it developed a skid and got out of control. It went across the road and slammed into a Nissan motor car that was traveling in the opposite direction. We are told that both motor vehicles were extensively damaged. The occupants of both vehicles were injured. They were rushed to the Falmouth Hospital where young Daniela Morgan, three weeks old, she was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E Sad indeed. Now, on to the mayhem by hoodlums. So if you look on your screen, I'm going to be showing you that video in the background. In that video, a guy named Pops, he was shot and killed at Charlemont in the parish of St. Catherine on Saturday, September 9. Pops, he had just boarded a car when hoodlums drove up and opened gunfire at him, killing him. The driver of the car, we are told that he was also shot. Now, due to YouTube's policy, I won't be able to show you when Pops was attacked, but I have dropped the unedited video over on Patreon. So, keep on watching the video while I continue the stories. This next incident, it took place Saturday night, September 9, about some minutes to 9 o'clock. It took place at Tarva Circle in the Cumberland area of Portmore in the parish of St. Catherine. We are learning that a man, his name is Damian Clark, but he's popularly known as Theo. Next month, on October 21, Theo, he will be celebrating his 44th birthday. We are told that Theo, he did tiling as a trade, but he was also a taxi operator. He lived at Tarva Circle in Cumberland. We are told that Theo, he was at his home when he felt the urge to have a drink, but nothing that he wanted to drink was at home. About 8.30, it is said that Theo, he jumped into his black Toyota Fielder motor car and he drove out onto the road where he bought a flask of rum and a bottle of Boom Energy Drink. Theo, he returned home about 15 minutes later. It is said that he parked the car at his gate and he got out of it with his rum and Boom in his hands. As Theo was about to walk away from the vehicle, a hoodlum walked up put a gun to Theo's head and squeezed it four times. Theo, he fell to the ground and the hoodlum, he ran away making good his escape on foot in the area. Theo, he ended up dying on the spot. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, four 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next story, listen me carefully now. Listen me carefully. On the early morning of Saturday, April 1, 2017, about 7.30, a guy, his name is Ricardo Reynolds, but he was popularly known as Teely. In two months' time, on June 12, 2017, Teely, he would have celebrated his 32nd birthday. 
So, on that early morning, Tilly and one of his friends named Kenroy, they were sitting on a wall outside of Tilly's gate at Africa in the Lilliput area of St. James when a blue Toyota Corolla Kingfish motor car drove past Tilly and Kenroy. The car, it drove for a distance then turned around. It then drove up to Tilly and Kenroy and stopped. Three hoodlums jumped out of the car with guns in hands and they opened gunfire at Tilly and Kenroy. Tilly, he managed to run off and the hoodlums chased him, caught up with him and pumped several bullets in his upper body and both his feet. Kenroy was not the target for the hoodlums. He received a single gunshot wound to his left arm. The hoodlums, they then escaped in the said Toyota Kingfish. Tilly, he was rushed to the nearby hospital and hospital at Rosal, where he died whilst he was undergoing treatment. Kenroy, he was treated at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Now, when the police had processed that crime scene, 11.40 and 5.45 spent shells were recovered from the scene. It was said at the time that Tilly, he was the target for the hoodlums and this was because he was associated with some well-known hoodlums in the area. So, Tilly, he had a son and many persons called him Tilly Boy. His surname is Reynolds, but I'm not sure of his first name. Yesterday afternoon, Sunday, September 10, about minutes to 2 o'clock, residents of the Capital Heights area in Green Pond in the parish of St. James, they tumbled upon the lifeless body of Tilly Boy. He was seen lying on his back and bleeding from his upper body. He was dressed in a red sweater and multicolored shorts. The police, they were called and when they inspected Tilly Boy, he had gunshot wounds to his upper body. He died on this spot. And later on in the night, in what many persons are saying is an act of reprisal for the shooting death of Tilly Boy, last night, some minutes after 10 o'clock, a group of guys, they were walking along the road at Rosites in the parish of St. James when a white Nissan AD wagon motor car drove up. We are told that hoodlums in the car, they opened a barrage of gunshots at the guys who were walking along the roadway. One of them, who is about 20 years old, he received gunshot wounds to his left hand. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape in the said motor car. The guy who was shot, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you'll be one of the first to be notified. And if you notice, yeah man, if you notice, we are now over 204,000 subscribers. We are heading to 250 by Christmas. So keep on telling a friend to tell a friend to come over yes so. <laughs> Come subscribe. Alright? Now, in the final story for now, and remember, join us later. We are planning to start at 5.30. Don't miss it. The truth will be revealed. In the final story for now, on Tuesday, July 25, I carried a story and I told you about an incident that took place the previous day. Monday, July 24, about 11 o'clock in the morning. I had made a mistake in that story because I had said that the incident, it took place in front of the Montego Bay Courthouse. But it was not in front of the Courthouse. It was in front of the Parish Council building on Union Street in Montego Bay. A guy who is popularly known as Blue Boot. He was standing in front of the Parish Council building when a guy wearing mask walked up to Blue Boot with a gun in his hand. Blue Boot, unseen the hoodlum, he ran off. The hoodlum 
chased Blue Boat and fired several shots at him, hitting him to the upper section of his right arm. A man who was coming from the doctor nearby, he was also shot. He had received a gunshot wound to the lower section of his left hand. Both Blue Boot and that man, they were treated at hospital and they were eventually released. So, Blue Boot, he was the target of that attack. However, he managed to escape with his life. So, the question is, the question is, who is Blue Boot and why was he targeted? Blue Boot's correct name is Michael Mandison. He is 27 years old. He was born on June 3, 1996, and he lived at Bokto Lane in the Salt Spring area of St. James. Truth be told, truth be told, Blue Boat is what the police would call a violence producer. Blue Boat is what Papaya News Links would call a hoodlum. In fact, Blue Boat, he was currently out on bail on gun and shooting charges. He was out on $200,000 bail and was to return to the gun court on Tuesday, September 26. But that is not to be because the police, they're reporting that on Saturday morning, September 9, about some minutes to 11 o'clock, a team of police officers, they were on patrol in the Guava Walk area of Anchovy. The police, they are saying that they spotted a guy walking towards them. This guy, who later turned out to be Blue Boot, the police are alleging that he looked into their direction and stopped. The police, they are also saying that as they were approaching Blue Boot, he pulled a gun and pointed it at them. The police, they are saying that they took evasive action and they did what it takes to save their lives. And in a few seconds, Blue Boot, he was down. The police, they are saying that Blue Boot, he fell to the ground, clutching a 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. It was affixed with a magazine containing 7 live rounds. Blue Boot, he died on the spot. And just like that, another hoodlum bites the dust. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Jamaica, Jamaica, the land of the sun Jamaica become now the land of 